Hey, how's it going guys? Zedai here. So, we definitely have to talk about this. So finally, PlayStation 5 Pro has got a proper showcase in terms of having a comparison between the PlayStation 5 Pro and of course the PlayStation 5, the regular. Now, we got an opportunity of hearing of this comparison from the very, very credible and fantastic YouTube channel by the name of Digital Foundry. I love their stuff. I constantly watch their videos, especially their streams. Well, not the streams, but their podcasts, I should be more specific. And yet it's so entertaining and interesting to hear about, even though half of stuff I don't even understand most of the time. I won't be just sugarcoating it here, because I'll be honest, a lot of things in technology I unfortunately do not get. So this is a kind of a viewpoint from me that doesn't necessarily will be going going into the PlayStation 5 Pro, let's say, right? And I'll be like looking at every little neat and nook and cranny just to see what is the benefit of having the PlayStation 5 Pro just in general. And in this case, uh, Digital Foundry have received from Sony about approximately of 80 gigabytes of ProRes file and contained plenty of gameplay, uh, you know, footage of the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, specifically played on the PlayStation 5 Pro. And in this video, as I'm playing it right now, they made a comparison and it was very entertaining to watch. And overall, what's been mentioned in this, yes, PlayStation 5 Pro is a boost. It genuinely is an upgrade comparing this to the PlayStation 5. Now, this article is coming from Eurogamer.net. If you want to check it out, I will leave down links below in the description. And I think you definitely would want to check out this article because the reason I even really much consider of making this video is because of what comes after within this article. So <laughs> what makes this interesting is that there is a sort of a site that you will be able to launch this comparison tool. When you do so, you actually get to interact with this comparison and you can see the differences that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will have with the PlayStation uh, Performance Smooth, PlayStation 5 Graphics Mode and a PlayStation 5 Pro. And you can see the differences of what it actually entails and what it gives you of, in terms of the differences, right? Seeing the comparison for yourself. Now, obviously here, as we can see, if I zoom out, yes, you can zoom out yourself. You can zoom in you, uh, yourself if you wish. And there's different images that portrays uh, from the their respective consoles, right? The respective way that they went about. So how close you can get in, how close you can zoom in. And of course, yes, you can actually move uh, the you know the footage look like right right now we're looking at tifa and we can just zoom in on tifa more and more let's do maybe a little bit more right here yeah and we can clearly see the differences comparing to playstation performance move uh, playstation graphics mode and of course the playstation 5 pro and now when we are actually paying attention to this we can clearly see some some things right some differences right as you can clearly see already perhaps you can spot it how much of the playstation performance you, you can clearly see her face and just general overall it's all like smoothed out and it's very blurry and but the playstation graphics mode is a lot more fresh in terms of you can clearly see the clarity PlayStation 5 Pro takes a step further and you can clearly see how much of an improvement it is comparing to the original of the PlayStation 5. The PlayStation 5 Pro also, as you can see, has a kind of a color variant or at least some sort of a brightness and stuff that you clearly can see that there is a, an improvement done. Let's zoom in a little more even. Let's go right up to her eyes. I'm curious about that. That this is the maximum zoom. zoom. So you can clearly see that she's looking at, at something and this is a lot more clarity you can clearly see in the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now, let's go to the next image just for the comparison's sake and see the differences. And here we are. We can see a cloud, like looking at the horizon of distance. And let's zoom in on him. But this time, I'm going to try to overlay the images. So in this case, this is just one image. And now I can drag and see the differences from uh, performance smooth, graphics, and of course the PS5 Pro. And let's zoom in a little more. Okay, so we have here, there's the PlayStation 5 Pro on this, on the right side anyway, we're in the middle of the graphics, and of course the performance. Look how much blurred out it really is. And of course, if we take a look at Tifa, maybe Tifa will be better pres uh, representation in this case. Look, oh, the, uh, I think it is the word anti-aliasing issues that is, uh, that is 
going through this little bit of noise and the graphics even in graphics mode my goodness so it must be very blurry and performance yes it's also the noise is here and there's also a graphics issue and it's very blurry so yeah as you can clearly see okay uh let's take a look uh red like see his tail maybe the fire how does the fire look Oh wow, that looks quite different. Maybe they captured a moment a little bit differently. That's why the, his fire's a bit uh, different comparing. All right, so yeah, you can clearly see he's very blurred out in here. In the graphics mode, he's a lot more clear. And then PS5 Pro mode, well, he's even a step up from there. Now let's go to the nature itself. And uh, let's go to overlay images and back to three images for the performance graphics and a pro variant uh, so I did see quite a lot of comparisons done with this zooming into this rock and yeah clearly the uh, just performance it is very blurry graphics it's a little more clear but the uh, PlayStation 5 Pro version is obviously far better and of course the one more so well it, I'm not gonna zoom in right in the middle I'm actually gonna go look out and maybe take a look at Tifa once again, right? And see red. Look, oh my goodness, you can clearly see the difference. Like very blurry, it's like to the point that it's just maybe even unrecognizable. But the reason we can recognize because obviously red and Tifa and the color scheme and, and clothes that they wear. But in PlayStation 5 Pro version, look at the cloud, like you can clearly see that he's standing there and you can see his eyes. It's a lot more clear, basically. And, you know, after watching and understanding what this like gives you in terms of improvements and things to look forward to from the PlayStation 5 Pro and comparing this to the regular PlayStation, I don't know if there's much of an improvement down here. Now, it was important for me to show here as well in this part of the video. So we're making, well, Digital Foundry, I should be very specific. Digital Foundry is making a comparison of the PlayStation 5, the performance, the quality, and of course the Pro variant, and seeing how much of an improvement there is in terms of the performance. And yeah, straight up, they even said a whole video that the PlayStation 5 Pro uh, is fantastic in terms of keeping that performance steady and steady on 60 FPS. That's fantastic because there were some issues. No, that's a lie. There was quite a lot of issues on PlayStation 5, especially even quality mode, and yes, including a performance mode that just the game could not really run properly. And I kept on just going down in performance, and it was big problems due to that. And look, we're clearly seeing the, uh, the differences performance and the PlayStation 5 Pro and how the quality is a lot more blurry. It's just a lot more that it's not exactly present in the performance mode comparing just to Pro variant. Anyway, guys, this was all, right? Honestly, here's the question I'm sure a lot of you may be asking. Is there a point to it? Is there a point of picking up a PlayStation 5 Pro? Is there a point of upgrading that's so significantly to the point that it might be even be quite ridiculous price? And honestly, I, I don't think so. I honestly think that it might be really be way too expensive for to consider even making this kind of a jump. And now, like, even if you sell your PlayStation 5 console, you could get up to 350, maybe if you're lucky, 400 euros, dollars, or whatnot. But then you still have to make up and to get somewhere another 300 euros if you want to pick up the PlayStation 5 Pro. And on top of that, we have to consider the accessories such as that CD tray because that will uh, it will cost yet another 120 130 euros so it's a lot of money it's a lot of money to be asking for and seeing uh, you know just to see these sorts of differences is it really worth it on i'll be honest no it really is not worth it because the upgrades are very marginal and also what is there to say that it will be even much of an upgrade? Because what we only have seen, it was only from the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. That's it. That was only one game. But, like, we have to understand that there are plenty of other games as well. I actually can see that the PlayStation 5 Pro will not be that significant in the step up if it doesn't do as well as it was showcased here in the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It, because it is possible that it might not be even be that kind of a step up that what we are seeing here from the digital foundry. So, and don't forget guys, Sony provided them with this uh, file, with this video, 
And this means that this is what they have the best thing to showcase uh, in terms of the comparison because they were that confident because they even sent it to Digital Foundry because they knew Digital Foundries are going to analyze the shit out of this video. And they did. And by the looks of things, it is doing well. It's doing very well. But nevertheless, I think that obviously they could be hiding something. And it's very traditional. It's very normal for a business to company to do this. It's not really unprecedented. But nevertheless, it's just we still have to wait, unfortunately, and see how our games perform. If the games, pretty much all the games, perform like this in terms of the comparison of PlayStation 5 and a PlayStation 5 Pro, then it actually may be worth it. Maybe. Maybe. And that's a big maybe. But if there's this is the maximum, this is all they can do, and only Final Fantasy VII Rebirth can actually, uh, you know, t like really take the full advantage of the PS5 Pro, what is the point of upgrade then in that case? You know what I mean? Because you're not going to be doing this sort of kind of comparison between the two for yourself. The only time you actually would be paying attention to these sorts of aspects is from the Digital Foundry's videos and some other people's videos and seeing how much of an improvement will it be or will it not be. That's it. That's all there is. But when, while you're playing the game, you're not gonna pay. You're not gonna pay attention to these stuff. Well, unless of course, if the game is, comes out completely buggy or broken, like for example, uh, now that I think about a Star Wars Jedi Survivor, now that game was like performance heavy. Like in terms of the performance, it was awful. But maybe the PlayStation 5 Pro at that time could have been a benefit for that sort of a title, and then it would not have been a, much of an issue. Uh, well, well, what can I say? Anyway, guys, that's all I want to have a little bit of chat for today. Thank you so much for watching, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all later.